Thank you very much, Lariel. Um, peace and love, everyone. And uh, thank you again for welcoming me this time virtually um, to uh, the Interfaith Center. And I'm uh, so very happy to, to be speaking to you uh, today. And I hope that, uh, 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 that this uh, very interesting period that we've been living in of 20, 2020 vision um, in, in the year 2020, the beginning of the decade, heading straight into a seclusion has been uh, elevating and uh, reflective and transformational um, uh, 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 for you. And then of course, now we are in a period of, of coming to face one another as a nation and, and dealing with haunting memories of, of centuries old uh, oppression and injustice that we are now coming once again to try and, 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 and deal with. Uh, so I hope all of that has been reflective. Uh, what for me, it, it has truly been um, a sort of like a, a creative breakthrough, at least not these past couple of weeks, but definitely since the beginning of, 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 the, uh, of the pandemic and um, uh, the seclusion, um, taking into consideration the, the, the tremendous suffering that we as, as, the, as not only human race, but nature in general has been uh, 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 going through. Um, uh, uh, you know, I felt sort of a, a, a musical transformation um, and, you know, for those of you that know me and that have heard me speak at the, I believe the last time I spoke at the, at the Interfaith Center, I did some readings from my uh, most recent publications, um, Art and Memoirs, uh, Setting Forth, and uh, the, the medium of writing has sort of been my way of expressing myself and negotiating my identity uh, 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 for the past decade. Um, but music had been a part of my life since childhood, um, where uh, specifically Arabic music um, and the, 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 the unique modalities of Arabic music, uh, which, are, which are categorized, whereas in Western music, we categorize music basically like Western keys. Uh, so like C major, D major, um, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, Arabic music, the modalities are categorized by emotion. Uh, which is closer to Indian music, which is the tradition that Hazrat Anayat Khan, uh, that Eric uh, so beautifully read from, that's the tradition he belongs to. Um, so we have modalities in Arabic music like Bayati, for example, that invokes a sense of nostalgia, um, and Saba, which is a very somber and sad sort of, uh, sort of uh, uh, tune. Um, and for me, it's been uh, twofold. It's been kind of like uh, uh, reigniting memories of childhood. As, as a first generation Arab Muslim immigrant, I'm trying to sort of recapture whatever exists from my, from my past. Um, and then also to negotiate my identity here. And then the second part, which I think is important for all of us, is to try and figure out um, uh, how can we be transcendent, right? And, and how can being musical, not just music, but how can being musical, musical beings, or thinking musically, living musically, tasting musically, um, how can that help us be transcendent and looking beyond uh, sort of the smoke screens and the veils that, um, that, that we are seeing around us or that people want to put around us in order for us to really figure out what's going on. Um, what's really interesting about all the readings that, that have been shared today is that um, I was actually thinking about beginning to, read, to quote from Hazrat Anayat Khan from the amazing book that, that Eric uh, mentioned, The Mysticism of Sound and Music. Um, and there is, an, there is another quote in that book in the beginning where Hazrat Anayat Khan, if you, for, for those of you who don't know, I have a feeling after this uh, 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 interfaith uh, uh, sermon, I think Hazrat Anayat Khan is going to become a regular at the Interfaith Center because he, his, his vision is totally in harmony with, 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 uh, with everything that, that happens at the Interfaith Center. And um, if you ever have a chance to visit 
um, uh, uh, Hazrat Anayat Khan Center. They're all over the United States. Um, you would be absolutely uh, overjoyed by the kinds of conversations that, that they're having. But uh, Hazrat Anayat Khan was actually a sitar player uh, before he became a Sufi guru. Uh, he was a sitar player in, in, uh, in India, and uh, he then joined uh, a Sufi order called the Chishti, Chishti Sufi order. And his teacher instructed him to go uh, to go to uh, uh, to go to America to spread Sufism, but he told him, "Don't spread it through religion. Spread it through music." He said, "Because the Western people, they will not listen to religion. They will listen to music." Um, and so, when he came to the West, he began uh, uh, teaching about spiritual realities. Uh, um, uh, uh, through the teaching that you find the mysticism, of sound, in the mysticism of sound and music. So in the mysticism of sound and music, he says, which is, by the way, available to purchase on Amazon, and I highly, highly recommend everybody to get it. Um, he says that if there is an art form that deserves to be called divine, then it is music. He says, why? Because music is the only art form that is transcendent above form, meaning it does not have physical form. It does not need to dress itself. We can talk maybe about auditory form, uh, the form of sound, but that's a, that's, a, that's, that's a very high level discussion. But he says when it, do, it doesn't need to dress itself in words, music or sound. It doesn't need to dress itself in color. It's just this transcendent vibration that is flowing through the universe. Um, and it's either captured by a musician or a listener. Um, and then he says that whatever uh, words or whatever paintings cannot capture, then words will be able to touch upon. And I actually think it's the other way around. I think whatever words cannot capture, then color might be able to touch upon. But then he says, whatever the latter, whether you believe it's word or color, whatever the latter cannot capture, then sound is there for that. That's what sound is for. And I remember one time, the only, actually the only time that I, managed, that I got a chance, the blessing to visit a, a Hazard Anayat Khan Center in Rochester, New York, um, we had an incredible conversation there, and then the, 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 the leader of the group, she said that Hazrat Anayat Khan had said once that reaching from the world of multiplicity to oneness, um, at the highest levels, we reach um, sound, and then right above sound, or sorry, right below sound, uh, there is perfume. There is smell, I think it's really, this connects really beautifully with the meditation that we had uh, with Craig, that there is perfume, that's like the highest level of knowledge that we can gain of the universe. That's the highest level of experience. But right above that, there is sound. And I asked them an open-ended question, and I think it's a question that we should ask ourselves as well. It's a really meditative question, which is how does perfume translate to sound? You know, what is the sound of a beautiful smell? Or what is the smell of a beautiful sound? One of the incredible experiences that I've had over the past few months is I've went, you know, I plunged myself into uh, the oud, which is uh, a Middle Eastern instrument. Um, uh, and I've actually began taking private classes and, 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 and I've, I've sort of embraced this, this, this path of, 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 of music. Um, but what I notice is there are specific melodies that when I play them, there is almost, and I don't know if I'm imagining things, and that's fine if I am, um, there, are, there is a beautiful scent, um, and it's the same always that's coming from within, uh, uh, coming from within the oud, from, from, from my instrument. Um, the other thing that's really fascinating is uh, this connection between Leonard Cohen uh, which Alora uh, uh, sang uh, one of his songs, Anthem, and Rumi, because uh, the, um, the, the, the verses that Leonard Cohen talks about, 
where he says uh, er everything has a crack in it. That's where the light comes in. That is almost verbatim one of the verses of Rumi where he says the wound is where the light comes in, right? The wound is where the light comes in. So I was doing a little bit of reading before, before the sermon began, before the service began about the possible connection between Rumi and, and Leonard Cohen. And it turns out that Leonard Cohen was really familiar with Sufi dervishes in Turkey. And uh, he knew someone who had gone to the Middle East and studied the ways of the whirling dervishes from, from Turkey. And then she came back to the States and then she had permission then to teach the dance. And then her teacher, her sheikh, her guru visited from Turkey to basically overlook and see how everything is going. And when he attended their gathering, he told her, he said, there is a Westerner in your country who is singing Rumi, but in his own language. And she told him, she asked him, who is this? He said, his name is Leonard Cohen, and the song he's singing is called Guests. And then Leonard Cohen is commenting about this. He says, up until that point, I didn't realize, I didn't know what the song Guests was about. I wrote it, I sang it, but I didn't know its importance until that point. And then he said, he said, and then I started reading Rumi. And I realized he is probably the most important mystic that has ever existed. And he's on the same league as King David. And of course, this connects us beautifully to Leonard Cohen's masterpiece, Hallelujah, uh, where, um, uh, 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 you know, where it begins, there, uh, 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 there is a secret chord uh, that David sang and it pleased the Lord. So um, what I want to say in a few minutes um, that aside from this commentary that I've been offering, is um, something that one of my teachers, uh, one of my uh, old idols, um, whom I've had the blessing to communicate and chat with, and he's a very spiritual person. Um, and he was telling me something that his own teacher told him. He said, my teacher told me, he asked me, how does a blind person process the universe? Right? How does a blind person, a person who cannot physically see, and by the way, in Arabic, we don't, the, the word for blind, a'ma, we never use it, is considered disrespectful. We actually use the word basir, which means a person who sees with the inner sight. And I think that's a really beautiful, I'm not sure if there is a word in English for that, um, but it's really beautiful. So I really feel always uncomfortable to say blind person, because it doesn't mean that you're we know for a fact, actually, that a person who, who's been deprived of physical sight, they're usually compensated with a higher sense in their other faculties, like either their sense of hearing or their sense of smell. Um, so I'll say a basir, which means a person who sees with their inner sight. He says, how does a basir person process the universe? He says he processes the universe most importantly through sound. He says everything to him is sound. Physical form doesn't exist. So he said, he said, when you play your instrument, become a basir, become blind. Close your eyes and realize that your instrument is the only medium you have to express yourself to the universe and for the universe to express itself back to you. And um, what I've been thinking about for my personal journey with music is that we have and for any of us that have been part of a religious community maybe where we didn't feel like we belong um we usually develop this this sense of you know i have a spiritual self or a spiritual identity which is who i think i want to be or who I assume I am. And then my historical self, which is my past. And usually these are at odds, right? That I think that who I was in the past, the things that I have done in the past, or even right now, some of my hobbies, because they do not fit with, it could be a false sense of spirituality. Then, um, then, there is always this contention. This is something that faces, for example, in my case, the Muslim youth a lot, 
that each of them has this past. Some of them might have been drug dealers. Some of, some of them might have been in gangs. Some of them might have done all sorts of things that they feel does not match with the spiritual life that they're trying to live. And for me personally, music has been the only medium that has been able to engage and harmonize these two mediums, these two selves, sorry, these two identities or these two aspects of my identity in a conversation. So what I've been trying to do is to translate my world into music and then to try and see how would I work out my problems? Um, how would I work out dissonance musically? And then to translate the solution back to this physical world. So instead of saying, let me pretend to be uh, someone without physical sight, maybe say, let me elevate to a higher sense of feeling which is the musical world, the world of music, the, the world of, 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 um, of, um, of, of, of notation, of musical notation, um, and then to try and come back to, to the physical world. So one of the things that, you know, that we're experiencing right now, injustice, negative thoughts, um, and the need for healing, sickness illness and and i will leave with this that sometimes in music there can be a note one note that feels out of place this note might it just it just appears as dissonance it's very clear it sometimes it might not be clear to the listener but it's definitely clear to the musician or actually, sometimes it's the inverse. It might not be clear to the musician, but it's very clear to the listener that there is a note or maybe a phrase or a word that feels out of place. And this in our physical world can be a difficulty, either an individual difficulty or a communal, social, countrywide, nationwide, planet-wide difficulty that we're facing. And the question is, how do we deal with that? So the question becomes, how do we deal with a troublesome note in music? And what I want to look at here is instead of, you know, this idea of curing the sick, I want us to think about curing the sickness transforming the sickness into health because this is i think what spirituality about traditional medicine um, is all about transformation transforming not only the sick into a healthy person but actually healing the sickness itself that the sickness itself needs healing so in one paradigm the solution might be just remove the troublesome note, just get rid of it and everything will be fine. But what if destiny had placed that note between your hands? What if it has come there? What if it's a, it's a note that needs healing? And so in Arabic music, we have this idea of, of maybe moving the note to a different place. Maybe the note is a story that's unfinished. And we know from our own personal experience that our own stories, if we are unable to tell them, we will suffer. We will suffer. And so a note, a phrasing in music, a part of a melody that is unfinished will be a thorn in the side of the entire piece. So maybe we need to listen to see how that phrasing can finish to its natural conclusion, to its cadence, right? And in Arabic, the word for that is qabab in Arabic music, which means base, to reach the base, to reach the, 
Qarar literally means the place where the water is still, where the water is no longer rippling, it's still, it's reached complete stillness. Right? Or maybe it needs to be embellished. Maybe the note needs to feel good about itself. Right? Maybe the note needs, the phrasing, the sound needs to feel good about itself. So Arabic music has this very rich tradition of ornamentation, which is to like in Western music, we would use adding, adding grace notes, uh, adding vibratos, adding lasando, sliding down the strings, all sorts of things in order to make that sound much more beautiful. And so taking that, translating it to the physical world, we can see now that many people who suffer, many people who are suffering injustice, um, all they need is for us to listen. They, they have a story that has to be told. And they don't need us to listen because they have figured the story out and they want us to just simply be passive listeners. They need us to listen because they need to figure out the story itself, right? And I'm reminded here of uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, who said that, you know, all of his movies have been about phobias that he has or fascinations. So he has phobias of deep waters and that's why he made Jaws. And he has fascinations with space. That's why he made, um, uh, you know, E.T. and, uh, um, extraterrestrial encounters of the third kind and, and films like that. And he says that when I make my movies, I externalize my fears and my fascinations. And I'm able to share them with my audience. And when I share them with my audience, then I imagine myself that, that all of you are sharing my fascinations and my fears with me. And then I'm able to see my story, my own personal story to the end. Right. Um, so this is this is the this is, I think, one of the powers of music um, that it's a it's a transcendent language. And, you know, for me, as somebody, for example, in the art of memoirs, I wrote in Arabic and English. And I realized that no matter how powerful words can be, um, there is a universal. There is a universality to music, really, like Hazrat Anayat Khan said, it's this ability to speak beyond words beyond grammar um the, the grammar of music is the universe itself it's this this flow that just goes direct passes through the brain passes through the mind and goes straight to the heart um, it's a very visceral experience and yet it's a very high level experience um, so this is you know this has just been a few uh reflections here and there about really what I have been going through and, and the power of music. I hope it's been helpful and, 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 and reflective for all of you as well. And again, thank you everyone for the wonderful uh, 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 musical selections and, and chantings and meditations and, and everything else. Thank you.